This is your host, Dave Matthews, back with Mike Burpees and Backhands, sitting with one of my good friends, Mr. Keith Evans, over in Oxford, Mississippi. He's a old Miss rebel and uh, just got to the uh, Goose Creek Racket and Health Club. Uh, got a great program over there. We're going to chit chat a little bit about state of junior tennis and some French Open uh, and, and a couple of other things. Keith, anything you want to say right off the bat about your program or the great club you're at now? Well, I've been here for about three months now, and uh, I've loved every minute of it. Um, it's right down the road from my house. I got a house right across the street from the club. Um, we've got seven awesome clay courts. We've got a health club. We've got one of the best gyms in Oxford. We've got three pickleball courts, and we've got an incredible swimming pool. Um, it's just uh, – it's a great place to land after, you know, the club I was at at Germantown that closed up. And sure. uh, I'm really happy to be here back in Oxford. You know, I played tennis here at Ole Miss, and so it's good to be back in Mississippi. That's good. Uh, what you got going on as far as any pro tournaments? I know over in Memphis you had some that ran for a while. Did you bring those down there to uh, the Goose Creek Club? No, we couldn't do it at Goose Creek Club because we're on clay. But I do still own the tournament, and we're having it on August 10th through the 17th at Snowden Grove Tennis Center in South Haven, Mississippi, which is basically Memphis. Um, it's just right there on the on the you know state line, so sure. it's about a 10 minute drive. And we're doing night matches this year. We they have LED lights at, at Snowden Grove. It's a brand new uh, public facility, but it is awesome. You know they've got. 16 courts and they've got led lights they got an incredible uh little clubhouse now and my buddy michael johnson who used to be my hitting partner when i was on the tour um he's that they've hired him and he's an unbelievable guy and doing a great job well good i'm glad to hear you're connecting with some of your your, your friends and uh hitting partners and everything you know it's, it's always good for us all to keep our you know straws and hands in the pile you know and try to work together it's, it makes a lot more fun life gets boring if you buy yourself all the time you're exactly right <laughs> uh, uh we'll mention that mr evans here at one point in time and that was probably was that after but after i we met and traveled a little bit yeah um, we traveled a little bit big dog yeah we went to dayton we ohio to and together. yeah oh absolutely we had a bunch of fun uh yeah. you remember a, when we met i don't think we met in dayton didn't we no, we met in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. We had oh, the same that, Where's that, that? tournament. Yep, I remember that. Yep, yep. Yeah, the E-Town Racket Club. Oh, my gosh. I now, first you, met you. now you're bringing back old memories now. Woo! <laughs> That's back when I was in real shape. Um, <laughs> well, I guess we'll, we'll get on off here on our topics. Um, what do you think – you know, I've been coaching junior tennis for, oh, my gosh, probably – 30-ish years or so, 25, 30, I had my academy. I, matter of fact, this year becomes our 30th year of my junior tennis academy. That's getting kind of old. Um, what do you think of, A, the state of junior tennis? I know a lot of the ranking systems, you know, you being on the ATP tour, uh, you know, I sit all the time and go, you know, there's a good example of how to run a, a point system. You know, it's sitting right here in front of us. And I know people want to say, Money always has a, you know, this, but you know what? You got the system you got now with the USTA and it does a lot of just generating income. You know, it's just, a, it's about money. I think there should be more discreet with the, uh, with the giving out of points, you know, and you know, you win rounds, you get points, but like, like when I was playing, you would go to, I would go to national tournaments and even I know the juniors, it's the same way. You go to a national tournament, like a case in point, there was a guy here in Georgia about six, seven years ago. He was ranked top 16 in the country. He was ranked – he wasn't ranked in Georgia because he didn't play any Georgia tournaments. You don't have to to have a national ranking. Right. So his sponsors told him he wanted him to play the qualifier here in Georgia, you know. So he goes there, and they don't know where to seed him. He don't got no points. And right. so they seed him like third. Well, he gets to the semis. And he wins the first set against the number one seed, 7-6. Unfortunately, the number one seed had to retire. He couldn't continue. He was out of gas. Put him <laughs> on a stretcher and rolled him out. No way. Oh, yeah. I'm dead serious. You know, it was 95 degrees down here in Macon, Georgia. You know how it is down here. Macon, Bacon. And 
Uh, he won the next. He won the finals like six one six one. Well, I mean, the guy's sixteen in the country. He ain't no chump change. But right. they don't give you any points at the local level for getting to the the round of sixteen in the nationals. And I'm like, that's a tragedy. I mean, that's, that's sad. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's incredible. And so you know what I think they try to do is they try to get get the kids into playing so many tournaments, but that ain't what it's about. It's about who's you know, if Keith beats me, he ought to get more points than me if he does it consistently. Even if it's at the national level, he ought to be ranked higher than me at the Georgia level or right. the Mississippi level. Yeah, you know, it used to be where uh, whoever you beat, you know, it, that helped you. You know, so if you, if you beat a, a really high-ranked player, right, and, you know, you would go in the next tournament seated above him. Right. So, you know, now with this point thing, I just, you know, I'm not really in support of it very much because, I mean, basically if a parent is – is is pretty wealthy they can they can buy their kid to you know a top ranking because they can accumulate enough points by taking them to all these tournaments sure so you know i i honestly think it should go back to the way it used to be you know but i'm old school like you and yeah you know if i beat uh, you know if i beat a kid that's ranked number one in tennessee then i have a direct win over him that should that should mean something you know in the next tournament and and you know now it really doesn't so that's right you know it's about how many tournaments you play that's right. How many points you get? That's right. Yeah, I, I see a lot of kids here in the Atlanta area. You know, the Atlanta area is so strong with nine counties. And, you know, you, you can look outside of Georgia, you know, outside of the Atlanta metro area, and you go down to South Georgia, and there's a couple of kids that are pretty good. But they come up here. They don't want to come up here to Atlanta. I mean, it, it's true with any major metropolitan area. You get more competition. And I just look at my kids. I say, well, you want to get a lot of points. Go down to – out Austin or Savannah or somewhere because they're going to have it about an eight draw and you're going to get all these points, but you're going to come back up here and get blasted. Yeah. Yeah. So, Atlanta's, you know, Atlanta's a ton of players. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, and that's true with any, any major city. Um, what do you think of this UTR that's come in? Have you seen much about that? I have. I've actually hosted a couple UTR tournaments. How you like it? I think it's great. I really do. I mean, uh, you know, as long as the UTR is right, so I guess you have to play um, maybe five or six of them to have a true UTR rating. Right. You know, the way they have it worked, it's it's a pretty cool tournament. You know, I, I took one of my kids that was 16 years old. We went to one down in New Orleans. And uh, this boy I, I was coaching, Sebastian Rios, he plays tennis now for the Rebels. Yeah. I took him down to New Orleans, and it was a great experience. It was only – there was only 16 – uh, players in this draw and so he got five matches in and the wow. first guy he played was 29 years old and he had played college tennis at Tulane and you know was still playing a few tournaments but his UTR was you know right around Sebastian somewhere around like 11.3 or four sure and uh, he played four really great you know matches where um, I think he went three and one. He won three and lost one, but all of them were, you know, seven, five, seven, six, or three sets. Sure. I really – I'm in support of the UTR. What about you? Now, I, we we up here just kind of started dabbing into it. You know, it, it's it's like – I remember when the NTRP first came out. You know, that was umpteen years ago. Yeah. Until you get enough match play, cross play in it, it's going to have its struggles. You know, it's just like anything new on the system. you got to get – Keith and Dave to play and and on and on and on and until everybody buys into it, it's just gonna kind of be hanging. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's anything that gets a little more validity to it than just this point system has got to be a step in a better direction. That's for sure. Now, yeah. here agree. we go again. Do you think USTA gonna like this coming in and people start using that ranking system over theirs? Oh, it's not gonna look good. You know how politics goes, Keith. I know how politics goes, but I know how the USTA goes too, and they, the USTA will probably buy up UTR. That you, you, you know what? That's that's a good point because you, you know, know they did that with. Uh, oh God, it just slipped my mind. I was thinking about it. Um, they did that with something else not long ago, and I was just like, oh gosh, here we go again. But I, yeah, you know. they did it with TDM. TDM, that was it. Uh, uh, tennisinformation.com. Yep. Uh, tennis, tennis rating. That was what it was. Yep. Yeah. I thought, I thought that lady, because you know, that lady that ran that, Julie Reg, just got inter- inducted into the Georgia Tennis Hall of Fame uh, this year. Did and, you? 
And uh, I played my first national right after I got through playing a, a whole year on the on the satellites and stuff. Um, I played some nationals, and she did the 30 nationals here in Atlanta and ran that thing like uh, unbelievable. I told her, I, told her, I said, do you ever play up running a tournament? Let me know. I don't care if it's mixed up with I'll play. <laughs> you know, you, you just like to have a good, a well-run tournament. That's all a good, a good player wants. Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, okay, let's go on to oh, what do you last but not least, what do you think about a third set uh, tie break instead of a third set for I don't know, you know, so the players? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's okay if they're playing multiple matches in one day, but if they're playing one match a day, I think they should be two out of three. You know, okay. but you know, n- nowadays, I mean, you know, these kids are in the main draw; they're playing two out of three sets, but then they drop down in the back draw, they're playing, you know, sometimes they're playing two or three matches a day. Right. So, you know, I, I'm in support of it, I guess, in the back draw, but not in the main draw. Okay. That, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, let's go to French Open. Um, let's go to the Serena Press mix-up, and I just briefed you on that a little bit. Yeah. And you, be, you being a tour player, and like I said with you, I – I come off the court, and if I lose, you know, I, I know I know commitments, I know obligations. You know, you got to go meet the press, you got to go spill your beans. You know, they they want to sell a story too, and I get it. But in her case, you know, she came off and she was ready to go to Paris or somewhere else and get on get on out of Dodge, right. and they chose to step in there and knock Mr. Team out of his interview. Uh, I think it's ridiculous. Think that's shameful of the tournament director to do that. Do you think team has got a gripe? I think for sure team's got a gripe. I mean, you but know. Once again, it's it's vintage Serena Williams, you know. It's it's same thing she did at the U.S. Open when she tried to say that she was a mother, you yeah. know. And I think it's just sad, honestly. Yeah, the thing team said, he says, you know, if Federer had lost or or Djokovic or Nadal had lost, they they wouldn't have cared. They would have waited. Yeah, they, were they would have waited. waited on their press time. Whenever you want me to go in, I'll go in there. And he said, "This, I was different." You know, I was like, "Yeah, you got a little point there, my bro. You got a little point." Yeah, they were saying something on the tennis channel last week about how the guys, you know, at the end of the match, they're they're, they're hugging each other, and it's like, you know, great fight, great battle. Right. But the, the but the women aren't there yet. You know, I mean, they barely kind of slap each other's hand, and and that's yeah. it. Yeah, so I think there's a little bit more camaraderie on the men's tour than there is the women's tour right now. I, I agree, uh, and that, that I'm glad you said that. That'll take me right into the next topic. That's a good uh, what do you call that transition point? Uh, I did hear, and I, I'm glad she won today. I mean, I didn't really follow her, Miss Barty. Um, yeah, I guess she's from from Britain. She's from Australia. I'll show you. Okay, I knew it was one or the other, but anyway, uh, she made a statement in the semis because they put the two. They put Nadal and Federer playing yesterday morning and Djokovic and team were playing after that on whatever that stadium court is, the big one. Um, And they had Barty and her semifinal and the other semifinal out on outside courts. And she said that was a tragedy. And I I pointed out really quickly, and my wife, you you know my wife, she she probably started laughing to it. We both sat there and said, you know, I sat right there and watched those semifinal matches, and that outside stadium wasn't even half full. It's that true. would have been embarrassing to put them in the stadium and it'd be a quarter full. You're and right. Man. Now you're going to play, and you're going to get me, and you started on this. You're going you're gonna to play for probably a third of the time and get equal pay, and you're going to complain? Oh, man. You don't want to get me started on that. <laughs> I mean, what in the world? <laughs> My dad said that. My my dad said, "Don't chop the hand and feed you, boy. Shut up." <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. What were they going to do? Put Feder and Nadal out on Suzanne Langland? You know, it was funny because I like the round before in the quarter men's quarters they had a women's match up there the earlier match in the morning, and then Feder and Nadal came out after that, the match before only had maybe a thousand people, <laughs> and all of a sudden when when that match got over, all of a sudden people started filtering in. I'm like. Wait a minute. <laughs> this ain't no mystery thing here. I know who's coming out that in gates. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I tell you what though, the French Open's awesome. You know, oh, I, it is. I had Brian Early come in. You remember Brian Early? Oh, yeah. In the USDA. So 
when we moved the pro tournament from Germantown to Snowden Grove, he had to come in and do a, a site check. Sure. And so, you know, we were in the car for about 30 minutes and then we came down to Oxford and did a site check down here as well. So I got a chance to talk to him for a couple of hours and sure. I asked him what, I asked him what his favorite grand slam was. And he said, by far the French open, he said, because you know, the, 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 the grind for every point, he said, the points are, are so much longer than any other grand slam you see, you know, at Wimbledon, the points are short. And, sure. But at the French, he said, it's just, you know, you see some incredible tennis. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it really is, uh, that condition, uh, today with Federer and Nadal, I mean, it was oh. unbelievable. The level they were playing in that condition. Yeah. Oh, I've been shanking balls left and right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was, uh, that was a great match. Oh, it was. I mean, there, and, and, and then, you know, with team and Djokovic today, you know, conditions were a lot better, but I mean, just the amount of hustle and grind, like you say, it's just, it's just off the chain. It's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. You know, All right. men, are, men are pretty much, you know, side to side and angles and drop shots and, and, you know, power serves. And, you know, I think the women play more up the middle. If you, if you watch, you know, if you compare the two, the women are more, you know, a lot of points up the middle of the court. Right. So. Exactly where me and you don't hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hit it to nobody. That means you go past me. <laughs> and I just ran to the net on everything. Because you got it. <laughs> We would shake your hands before we even needed to. That's right. <laughs> All right, who are you picking in the men's final? I think team's gonna gonna win. I really do. Gonna be. I think he's got his number. You think he's got? Well, I mean, he got experience against him. He just beat what was it in Madrid or Rome? Or is it he, Madrid? Was it? I think Madrid? It, he might have beat him twice this year on red clay. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. I think you're right. You know. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, you think it's going to be a close match, like three sets, or you think it's going to get drawn I, out? To... I think it's team and four. I was going to say four. I, yeah, I'd give him the dog probably. He'll probably sneak one of them out because he, he don't give up too often either. <laughs> but you never know. This is team's first Grand Slam final. So, I mean, it's uh -uh, good. Uh-uh. He was, in, no, the, he was right. in the French last year. That's right. It's a rematch. Oh, it's a rematch. That's right. Yeah. 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 He's coming after this dog. It's the second final. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I would say, who'd you pick in the women's final? But that's already over, and that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, what, what is different about training players of today versus yesteryear when you first started? Anything different? You know, I think that uh, there's just so much emphasis nowadays put on ground strokes, and uh, there's not as much, you know, moving forward and finishing at the net. But if you look at the next-gen players that are – that are up right now, like Shapovalov and yep. uh, you know Cici Pass. Those those kids are, are actually moving forward when they when they should be, right? And they're finishing points at the net. And you know what I see in college tennis now, and especially in junior tennis, is that they're afraid to go up. They're afraid to go up to the net, especially in college tennis. It's like everybody stays back at the baseline and they can rally all day long, and they're waiting on someone to miss. But uh, uh, you know, th those players are just a dime a dozen. And yeah. you get a player that's pretty solid from the backcourt, but then, you know, he can mix it up and serve and volley on a few shots and or a few points he serves and volleys. And if he gets a short ball, he's not afraid to, you know, rip it and come in behind it. Yeah. Um, you know, those young players now like Shapovalov and CeCe Pass, uh, those guys are doing that now. And I think that's why they're doing so well. I agree. Um what else you want to talk about? Are you close <laughs> doing well? You, close you know what else I want to talk about? Yeah. I want to talk, I want to talk about the USTA having a stronghold on how it's almost impossible for me to run a tennis tournament now because there's some kind of USTA match going on. I mean, oh, what, what, it's, you, know, you remember the days when, when all we did was play tournaments? Oh, yeah. Well, and, you know, I had a conversation with uh, a gentleman. This has probably got to be – Probably at 05. Yeah. And that was when I was last playing a lot of my big tournaments, like like national tournaments. And uh, I, I went to uh, South Africa for the uh, double cup team and stuff like that. I came back and my sponsor said, I need you to go over here somewhere in Atlanta and play a tournament, you know, just to kind of help me out. I said, okay, no problem. But just tell me where. Well, he gave me a tournament. And, you know, I live on the east side of Atlanta. He said, the tournament's over here around Marietta. Well, Marietta is – 
35, 40 minutes away from my house already. And then it was eight miles off the highway, which is 75 headed to Chattanooga. So it took me an hour, 10 minutes to get there, just to get there. So I, I entered a tournament. I go over there. I'm the number one seed. I, you know, I, I get a buy first round. So I don't have to play on Saturday. I think it's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday tournament for a 16 draw. This wow. is a senior tournament. This is not, you know, knock down, drag out, open stuff, which right. even in the open, I used to play two singles matches in a day. You just got to give me a couple, three hours, you know. If me, right. You know, one thing me and Keith and me and any opponent didn't mind is that if you told me and Keith to stand on our head, we didn't care because we would do it if you made us both do it. You're right. If, if, if we knew we had two singles matches in one day and we would get a two-hour block in between, we didn't complain because we both had the same path. Right. And we were getting shaped for it. So I'm sitting there and I, like I said, I get a bye on Saturday. I go up on Sunday to play. I, I win my match in about 35 minutes. And, it, and you know me, I'm, I'm trying to shake hands before the you know, balls are snapped out of the can. <laughs> I'm going to the net. Spin. Oh, I'm back. I'll be back up here in a minute. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to get out of here, buddy. <laughs> so about 35, 40 minutes, I'm out of there. And I go off the court and I ask the tournament director, I said, well, where's my, my match that I'm playing the winner of? And he goes, right there beside you. I said, oh, okay. I said, is it possible? I mean, I'm, I'm, playing nine, I'm 35, 9, 45. I said, is it possible for – we can even play this at 1 or 2 this afternoon. They're going to be through by 10 or 11. Right. You know, I'll give the guy two or three hours, so I don't have to drive back over here. And he goes, well, go over here and get some lunch, and I'll call you when it's finished, and we'll go from there. I said, okay, that, that's good, good idea. I call the guy, and the guy goes, no, I'm not – I'll see you tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, on the other side of Atlanta in that rush hour traffic. You know, an hour, 10-minute drive took me two hours to get there. Right. I beat the guy in 35 minutes, and I found out then he's on the, the ranking, not the ranking, the tournament committee for seniors. And I said, why are we playing one match a day when these matches are taking like an hour? And he says, people just don't, they're just, no, they just can't get in shape for two matches in one day anymore. And I said, so you, you're, you're kicking out the people that are in shape that, spend the time to get in shape in lieu to, to draw people that can't get in shape. Well, what are you doing to the game of tennis? Because tennis is about a lot of its conditioning, the mental and the physical grind to keep your style of play up longer than that guy can survive. I agree with you. Yeah. And he says, well, I don't know. I, you know. I don't know what to tell you. I said, I, this is what I'm going to tell you. And this, this is in 05. Here we are in 19. And this is what happened. Back then, we there was a senior tournament, you know, with – 30s, 35s, 40s, all the way up to probably 70s, almost every weekend somewhere in the state of Georgia. I mean, from March yeah. until October. Because, you know, it's good playing weather. And, you know, sometimes you go to Savannah for a trip or, you know, but there was always a tournament somewhere. Right. I looked, I looked last November when the tournament schedule came out for this year, between March and October this year, there's eight tournaments. Total, total. Senior tournaments have just gone. Yeah, they're just not even on the docket anymore. They say USTA tennis. Well, and you know, I see some of my guys are playing like senior leagues and stuff like that. But that ain't what I wanted to play. Neither do you. You know, we we like the senior cup. We like the the competitions where we play the singles and the doubles in literally uh, one or two in the afternoon, and then we can just lay around the pool. We're about half dead. That's fun. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, that was fun. You know, you know. Nowadays, I mean, you know, I try to host a tournament, and it's like, well, you know, Keith, I really want to play your tournament, but I can't because on Saturday I have two USTA matches. I have one, you know, eighteen plus match, and then at three o'clock I have a forty plus match. And so it's like, you know, you can't work around them, but right, it, it's every week. You know, I mean, it, the, the way it started out was USTA had had team tennis in the spring. Right. And then that was it. Right. And then all of a sudden after that, mix started. Right. Then they had spring and then mixed. And now they have trial level. And yeah. then they have combo. And then yeah. they have ESL. And they have some – it's like the USTA has a complete stronghold on everyone. And, uh, and so it's it, – I've got to, like, you know, call USTA league coordinators and ask, you know, when the best time for me to host a tournament right. is. And then I did that, and then, you know, I'm asking some of, the, some of my friends, I'm like, hey, you guys, you know, 
you don't have a match this weekend. And like, well, we need a, we need a break, man. We need a break. <laughs> I'm like, what the, you know, what well, the hell? The, so, the, lady I mean, that, the lady that I work with, she runs seven tournaments a year, all juniors. And she, you know, we run a slam up tournament, kind of like we we were brought up on. You know, you you play. If you think there's any rain coming in a three day tournament, you put that thing up there, bank it up on Friday, and you get them in as much as you can. So when the rain starts, you just in a delay, and that's nobody wants that. Yep. So you know, we do the best job at a tournament, and then all of a sudden, what do they do? If you used to have a tournament, the qualifier here used to be in Macon. It's now here in Atlanta. Uh, the qualifier used to be the first week school was out. So, you know, school would get out like on a Friday. It would be the next Saturday. Well, that usually that weekend that everybody got out of school was Memorial Day. And so she always had a tournament on Memorial Day as like the qualifier warm up. So kids that were going to the qualifier could get a couple of matches in to see where they are and go from there. Right. They moved the qualifier back a week. It's on top of her tournament now. Oh, you're kidding. And so it's just and, – and now, you know, we, we get tournaments that we used to have. We would get – you know, and we got 12 courts. We run – you know, we can handle up to about 140 or 50 kids in a three-day tournament, you know, a, a Friday night, Saturday, Sunday tournament. And we even with a fullback draw. And now it's like if we get 70 entries, we're lucky because they put tournaments literally like four miles down the road. And you're like, I didn't think it, I didn't think they could do that. Oh, yeah. they do that all the time. I mean, it's crazy. You would think there's a rhyme and a reason. There ain't. There's not. They they think the more tournaments they can get people to put on, the more head taxes they get coming in. Right. And I'm like, that is the biggest crock of crap I've ever heard. <laughs> you know, it's it's not a good business model. I'll put it that way. Right. You know, you would like to have a Keith Evans or a Dave Matthews or somebody that's really putting an energy, some energy into running a quality tournament. Right. You would like to see them do that and then don't put somebody on top of their area of the town, you know, on the same weekend. What are you doing? Yeah, that's crazy. But they, they do it all. They don't do that in Mississippi. In Holy Mississippi, cow. They, they have to be 150 miles apart. Oh, geez. So we, we, we're we not 10 miles. Well, we're not even that. We, we, we'll we have them. Same weekend, we'll have one. There'll be one down at GTC, which is Gwinnett College. Oh, that can't be eight miles away. And These so, are junior tournaments. All right? junior tournaments. And so what will happen is, you know, we're in Buford, which is about eight or nine miles further north of 85 than GTC. Well, guess what? People want to stop GTC because it's right. closer. Sure. It's closer. And I'm like, why do you do that? And okay, if you want to pull on the other side of town, not a problem. Not right. a problem. But right there on the same artery that we are, give them a come on. I mean, yeah, yeah that's not, that's not they've cool. been running tournaments for 17 years. Yeah, you know, great. doesn't do anything wrong. And, you know, we, we, we penalize everybody the same. We, you know, you want to be on time. We tell them, be on time. Actually, be 15 minutes ahead so that you're not late. Right. You know, traffic's everywhere. So, yeah, I agree. So, you know, but as far as the adult tournaments, I mean, they're, you can't hardly have one nowadays because there's some kind of, you know, USTA team tennis match going on or, you know, they're, the state tournament's going on or now they're going to sectional down in Mobile. Or, yep, yep, it's just, yep. It's crazy. You know, I, I remember the days when, you know, we used to go play money tournaments or we'd yep. go play, you know, you know, big events and where they would have a party for every, everybody would have a party on Saturday night. You'd go have dinner and there'd be a band and you'd dance and then yep. you go, you know, back and you'd come back the next day and play. And it was like a big club event. Yep. And you know, it, you just hardly don't see that anymore. And I miss it a whole lot. That camaraderie, that camaraderie. And that's, I'll tell you, it, it, I see pickleball having some, some growing pains because I, I hear a lot of, we've got about, we only have three courts in our, in our gym. And we're, so we're inside. We never have a rain out. We never have a snow out, nothing. And uh, we have about 50 people that during the school year, especially because I go on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings from like 9 to 12, and there'll be 50 people in that joint waiting to play. Oh, and man. they all get along probably about 98% of the time, about as smoothly as you can be, because they, want, they, they know that if you mess up a good thing, 
then it'll go away. And I said, so don't mess it up. That's you know, right. you know, yeah. get along. Keith, you don't want to play with Dave, but you know, sometimes Dave's the only one on that bench. Go play with him one game and just tolerate him and get on down the road. You know, yeah. keep keep yeah. the camaraderie going, and they all they have a good time about it. You know, they really do. They really do. Uh, you, you'd be pretty tough to pass at the net. And pick <laughs> I think me, me and you can we can fill some holes there, bro. I think we could. They wouldn't lob over us, that's for sure. <laughs> well, my my daughter Sarah, she's got she's got a wicked um, some some pretty quick arm speed. <laughs> she she will welt somebody in a heartbeat. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, it's a great game. It is. Uh, it we, is. We've got three pickleball courts at Goose Creek, and uh, you know it's getting more and more popular. You remember Rick Witzkin? Yeah. Todd, yeah. Todd yeah. Witzkin? Yep. Yeah. So I talked to Rick Witzkin the other day, and uh, his name now is Rick Ripskin Witzkin. <laughs> and so he's like the fourth-ranked pickleball player in the world now, or in the United States. Wow. So he's going to come down to Oxford and put on a little clinic. pickleball clinic, and then we're yeah. going to have a tournament afterwards. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. So it was pretty cool talking to him and – That'll, it'll be interesting because, you know, I, I have this theory that I think that I think pickleball is a great sport. It is. But they haven't gotten a really top-notch tennis player to walk in yet. And when, right. that hap when that happens, you know, the little dink things that they kind of hit over? Right. One of us is going to take that thing and slap somebody right in the middle of the chest with it, and it's going to be game on, baby. <laughs> 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 they're gonna look at you. They're gonna look at you and go, "Well, that's not sportsmanlike." Kid's gonna go, "Loser." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I see the little dinks in there, and I'm like, my my daughter will look at me and go, "Yeah, them, let them have it." <laughs> Part of the game. If you can't get out of the way of my bullet, guess what? <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> find some meat somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yep. oh, it's a it's lot good of fun, to see you, Huh? It's good to see you. Absolutely. I will get my butt over to me and Janice and the kids. We'll get them. Well, my kids ain't kids no more. They're 23 and 26 coming up. So Wow. Hey, don't don't time fly? That time flies. Oh, my gosh. Flies, man. I, I, tell remember, you. I, I remember when the one you just picked up was the only one you had. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. It seems like yesterday. I remember beating you in pool. Oh, I mean, this is the town. Remember we played pool all night long? Yep, yep, yep. And yep. And then we were in we were in housing again in Spartanburg. Yep, I remember that. Remember that? I broke so many strings over there, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I think yeah. I had eight rackets that came off with like one. I was like, what the hell is going on? You had that wide string bed and that was on clay. That was it. That yeah. was it. That was the only clay court tournament I won. I won that tournament four times. Holy cow. I used to love that term. I, I would think so. <laughs> you never stop a good thing. I tell you that. We know that too well. Yeah. I think Cornelius is still there. Is that right? Yeah, he's still there. He's, Holy cow. He's doing great. All right, my man. You got anything else you want to throw in here? Man, it was great. It was, it was good. I've never done this before, so this is – Oh, it's a lot of fun. I, you know, like I said, if you want to, you know, before Wimbledon, well, we'll kind of keep an eye on the draws at the at the, the pre-warm-up tournaments, and we'll see if we can figure out who's going to, you know, pull the knife on everybody else or who's going to, you know, bow out. And, you know, kind of go from there. We might do a little pre-Wimbledon thing here. We could do some damage at Wimbledon. Oh, oh, we, we can make it quick and get some lunch too. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. All right, buddy. Well, have a good one. I appreciate your time, and I'll make sure I get this up probably by tomorrow morning sometime. Okay. Thanks. All right, man. buddy. Take care, Keith.